Welcome fellow audio sorcerers, wizards, and gurus to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the audio sorcerer. In today's video, we're gonna continue along with my Pro Tools series and talk about the six different track types that exist in Pro Tools. But before we get to the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up, and of course subscribe, and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, let's get to the video. The first track type that we're going to talk about is an audio track, but before we do that, I need to show you how to insert tracks into Pro Tools. There's two different ways to do this. The first way is to go up to the track tab up here and then click on new and it'll open up the new tracks window. Now I don't really like to do it this way because I think it's important to use keyboard shortcuts as much as possible when using Pro Tools. So let's close this window here and if you're using a PC, it will be Control Shift N and on a Mac it will be Command Shift N to open up that same window. So within this window, on the left you have to create, and this is how many of this track type you want to create. The next is whether it's going to be mono or stereo. After that, you get to choose between six different tracks, and then you have to choose whether it's in samples or in ticks. So don't pay attention to this, just leave it in samples, that's the default and you'll be fine with that. So let's create an audio track by hitting Create. All right, so if you're new to recording, an audio track is what we select to record a microphone or per se a guitar plugged directly into an interface. It's basically meant to capture audio that is outside of the computer. And that will make more sense as we talk about the other tracks that exist in Pro Tools. So to record audio, you need to actually go over to your IO section here. You need to click on this down arrow, you go to interface, and then you need to select which input on your interface your microphone or your guitar is actually plugged into and then that'll make it available for recording. However, uh, we haven't talked about how you actually select an interface for recording and where you actually set that up. Now that's a little bit off topic, but I believe it's important uh, for this tutorial. So let's go up to the setup section here. Let's go down to playback engine. So your playback engine is actually where you allocate your audio interface. So if I click on this down arrow here, you see I have a couple different options. So the focus right is actually my audio interface if I was recording right now, but I have the voice meter virtual ASIO selected because that's what I'm using to make this tutorial for recording. So that's where you select your audio interface at. The second track type that we're going to talk about is a aux input. So let's go select that and let's go to create. All right, so an aux input shows up in green and it's basically used for two different things. Um, it's used for creating buses or submixes or it's used for your effects like reverb and delay. Now we're not going to talk about how to use it for reverb and delays because that's a little bit more advanced for this tutorial. But if I was describing how to use it for a bus or a submix, you can essentially take say all of your drum tracks, let's say you got 10 drum tracks, you can route all those to this one bus and then you can process them as one. And that's one of the most uh, beneficial things of a aux input track. The third track type that we're gonna talk about is a master fader. So let's add one of those in. The master fader shows up in red and it's basically where you send all of your tracks to. So all of your audio tracks, all of your aux tracks, and all the other tracks that we haven't talked about yet, this is where they go. And this is the last point before the audio gets out of your system and into your interface and then into your speakers. And this is where you would process your mix as a whole here. And if you're mastering within your session, this is where you would master at. The fourth track type that we're gonna talk about is a VCA master track. So let's add one of those in. A VCA master track shows up in this bluish purple color and it stands for voltage controlled amplifier. Now a VCA track is meant to handle subgroups. So in our scenario before, when we said we had like 10 drum tracks and we routed it to a aux, uh, this would be the same scenario. You can route all of them to this as opposed to an aux, except that this only controls volume. You cannot add any processing to a VCA track. So, you know, it may sound like it's not as cool or as useful as an aux track, but it does have its benefits. The fifth track type that we're going to talk about is a MIDI track. So let's add one of those in. 
The MIDI track type shows up in this bright purple here, and if I'm being 100% honest, as a new recorder, you're probably never going to use this track. Uh, the reason I say that is that for MIDI uh, tracks, we want to use these to trigger different things. So an example would be we can use MIDI notes that we record onto this track to trigger plugins like a vocoder or like Ozone Stutter Edit, and that will allow us to create those different effects based upon notes that are in our key. So that's the main purpose of a MIDI track in Pro Tools. All right, so our last track type, number six, is an instrument track. So let's add one of those in here. So the instrument track shows up in this brownish color, and it's actually a combination of a MIDI and aux track. And this is what you would use for any of your virtual instruments, uh, virtual synthesizers, virtual drums, virtual uh, pianos, etc. So you would just apply one of those plugins to the insert here, and then you record on here, and this is going to create a piano roll with MIDI notes, and those MIDI notes in turn trigger the sounds within the virtual synth. So that's actually how a uh, instrument track fully works. In closing, I would say if you're new to recording that you will be using the audio and instrument tracks 99% of the time. All of these other tracks are very important, but you'll learn how to use them more properly when you get to advanced recording. So I really hope you guys liked this video, and if you did, please hit that like button, and also please subscribe, and of course hit that notification bell so you can see when I have new videos coming out. With that being said, I will talk to you guys later. Peace out.